morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Sir Meerkat, and welcome back to the Moto Meerkat channel. Now, just before this video starts, I want to give a quick shout out to a budding young racing driver named Ethan Davis. He's got some huge plans coming up for you guys, and it involves me too. He's teamed up with a load of different YouTubers, including, as I say, myself. We've got John Warren, we've got Will from FP1, and we've got Dylan James GP. So make sure you stay until the end of the video to find out a little bit more about that. But we all know that Formula One has been a key cultivator of engineering prowess since its inception, as teams look to push the limits of regulations in any which way that they can to maximize their car's performance and get a leg up on the fellow competition. Take Mercedes' ingenious DAS system, which allowed for the drivers to pull back on the steering column to change the angle of the wheels to more evenly warm them as the car traveled down the straight. This kept the tires at a better temperature, which thus meant that the car would have more grip as they enter the next corner. That Mercedes system first made an appearance, obviously, at Catalonia for testing in 2020, but it was swiftly banned for 2021 by the FIA. Now, today, we're going to talk about a similar situation that occurred all the way back in 2010. Really got to cast our minds back, but this time, not with Mercedes, with McLaren on their MP4 25 machine, where they introduced a new device, which was a little more obvious than DAS, just a tad, and sent the paddock into an absolute frenzy at the time. So let's find out just what the F this duct is. <laughs> Way! So, as I say, let's cast our minds all the way back to 2010. Seems like ages ago now, especially with um, the, the thing we do not name that seems to have made time feel like years when it was only mere seconds. 2010 feels like so long ago. But if you do think back a little bit, maybe these can trigger your memories. We had I Yaf Yala Yokel in Iceland, which decided to erupt, bringing down almost all air travel. That was not fun. Then there was some Chilean miners that got trapped underground for two months. Not great for them. And F1 had just come off the back of an absolutely insane season in 2009, with the new team, Braun GP, taking both the constructors and drivers' titles, with, of course, Jensen Button, and then becoming Mercedes for the 2010 season. With such volatility at the top of the championship, which we just don't really see nowadays, it's kind of been dominated by Mercedes for quite some time. But I don't know, I don't want to jump ahead of thing, but Red Bull do look good this season, so it could be. But yeah, because as I say, it was just so close at the top of the championship, these teams were pushing the boundaries of every tiny minute detail on the car to try and get those extra tenths, squeeze out that extra tiny bit of time so that they can move ahead of their rivals, get the top of the championship and get all that extra prize money at the end of the day. And it was in this vein that McLaren and produced their incredible invention, which, as I say, wowed the paddock. It was officially titled the RW80, but would become known as the F-duct due to its placement on the front nose. Now, I didn't actually find this out until I was researching this video, funnily enough, so I thought I'd impart this knowledge onto you as well. It's called it because the letter F in the Vodafone logo, they obviously sponsored the car at the time, was being slightly impeded by the device, hence the duct with the F that was on it. Make sense? Cool. Let's move on. Overall, the device's like obvious job was just to make the car's top speed go even higher. It would do this by changing the airflow through some piping that goes through the car, and it all goes different ways, and it gets a bit higgledy-piggledy, and it makes my brain hurt. The drivers would manually change the airflow by covering an inlet inside the cockpit with either their sort of left knee or left elbow, meaning that the car was no longer held back by the drag from the wing and could thus go just that little bit faster, as I say, three miles an hour to be exact. Now, I'm not the most technical man in the world. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you on that front. Really don't have a clue what's going on. I just like looking at the fast cars going, Nyew! so I probably shouldn't be the one to explain kind of how this thing works. So I'll chuck it over to my best mate and co-commentator, Martin Brundle. Take it away, Martin. The regulations forbid any movable aerodynamic part, and so McLaren have developed an aerospace system relying on dynamic air pressure changes. Air is scooped from the top of the chassis and channeled through the cockpit area towards the back of the car. Above the driver's head in the rollover hoop is another major air duct. The blue arrows demonstrate air channeled towards the inlet trumpets of the high revving V8 engine. The yellow arrows show air used to cool the gearbox oil in normal running. At lower speeds, the blue air continues to the hungry engine, while the yellow cools that seven-speed gearbox. On the straights, Button and Hamilton use their left knee, which has nothing else to do while the right foot presses the throttle, and this blocks a hole in the system. 
The resultant pressure change now diverts air along the top of the engine cover into the rear wing elements. Downward force is generated when air accelerates under these wing surfaces, creating a low pressure area. Our diverted yellow air is forced through a slot which disturbs this airflow and cuts down force and critically drag. Thank you, thank you for that, Martin. I really appreciate that. Always a good guy to have on hand. But obviously, other teams were not too happy to see this innovation on the McLaren car and quickly began developing systems to challenge the McLaren system in an attempt to gain those three miles an hour back. Sauber was actually the first team to do this and create their own system, unveiling their designer only round two. So really, really quickly they did that with sort of slight differences to the McLaren one, but not crazy different. The main difference was that the snorkel was on the side pod rather than on the chassis. Mercedes and Ferrari would introduce their versions of the system in China with Red Bull finally introducing something similar at the British Grand Prix after a number of revisions. They couldn't seem to quite get it right. Then Force India and Williams would be even later in the season at round nine in Valencia as Williams would actually have to cut out a section of the cockpit surround for their device to work. A very Williams way of going about things. <laughs> And Renault would introduce theirs even later at the Grand Prix at Spa Francorchamps in that year. However, as a lot of these devices had obviously been quite rushed to get them on the car as quickly as possible to try and catch up that pace that they'd lost, they were possibly not quite as polished as the teams would like them to be. And there were often long periods where drivers would have to race sort of with one hand and race like really awkwardly sat in the cockpit, which I mean, might not be the most safe thing. Some people did make their feelings and their concerns known to the FIA over this safety safety possibility nightmare that could happen. But the FIA would keep to their word that they'd said to the McLaren team that they could use it to the end of the season and same with all the other teams as well. So all the teams were allowed to use the system during 2010, but they all knew that by 2011, it was gone. They were not gonna be able to use it. So although it does seem kind of like wasted resources for development when you look back on it, the f duck would actually end up being the precursor to a device that we still use openly in F1 today, the Drag Reduction System or DRS. This was because the f duck gave the FIA valuable data to assist in their age-old question of how to improve overtaking. And the F-Duct would also just inspire loads of other teams to try out different kind of aero endeavors as they all continued bending the rules to try and maximize their car's performance at every opportunity possible. But what do you reckon about this little weird F-Duct thing? Was it a nifty little innovation that should have been allowed to stay in Formula One? Or was it a device which was basically just a death trap waiting to happen, which the FIA was smart to ban pretty swiftly? I'd love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions about the topic in the comments section down below. But yes, as I mentioned earlier in the video, Ethan Davis, myself and other motorsport content creators have partnered up with him to make some more interesting content for you lot. So Ethan currently races in the F1000 series in the UK, scoring a podium on his debut and becoming the youngest podium finisher ever in Formula 1000. So I think we can say he's pretty good. But Ethan has his sights set on bigger and better things than F1000. Not that it's not a fantastic championship, but we want to be in Formula 1, baby. Okay, okay. Formula 1 might be a bit long-sighted, uh, maybe a bit too distant in the future. Let's look to a bit closer in our future timeline. Ethan wants to race on the Formula 4 grid at the Circuit of the Americas, which hopefully, not confirmed yet, should be a support race to the Formula 1 weekend, which would be so, so epic. And then Ethan also wants to go into GT racing in 2022. And as I say, with Ethan's access to kind of motorsport machinery and race days and things like that, myself and the rest of the lads have got loads of future content kind of based around around these opportunities to bring to you. So of course, make sure you subscribe to the Moto Maker channel so you don't miss out on any of that cool content that's gonna be coming. And also definitely the other guys I mentioned earlier who are gonna be involved as well. But also make sure you definitely check out Ethan's fundraiser. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. Any assistance you can give him will genuinely mean the world to him, I'm sure. So make sure you go and check it out and just give him a bit of love on the social medias and let's get him going. Come on, we wanna see Ethan on that F4 grid. Come on, lad. But anyways, that's all from me today. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. As I say, if you did, drop a like on it down below. I do really appreciate that. And I will see all of you meerkats later. Goodbye, guys.